Okay, I'm gonna do a video here of the um, instrument mechanism in full. The only one that's not gonna be shown is the bell, um, but I'll, I'll try to go over that. And I can't do that because the table's gone. Um, but anyway, here's the harp. It's got, you can see the hooks going up and down there. You can see they're labeled up top here. And uh, you can kind of see the fishing lines that go up. And then this one is the bell. There's only one for the bell, and it's actually the same exact motor as the har as the harp. You can see all three of those lines right up here, coming from the reindeer motor. You get a close-up of the parts of that assembly on the end. All that stuff just came from where I was including that metal rod that's um, screwed into the reindeer motor as the motor arm. And I upgraded everything to hooks this year, and that makes it really easy to just take, unhook the instruments and take them down. And at night with show lighting, they don't show up at all. Most of the time, they're behind the curtain drop that drops down a little bit, you know, right down here. So you can't see it. It does go a little bit below, but you can't see it at all. And I've looked and looked, knowing they're there, and I can't find them. Um, the bell, again, it's the same exact thing. Um, that's the only one that moves. It goes down to the bell, which is, you know, right here on the table. And then there's another one, and then it's basically wrapped around it a few times and then knotted. And then it goes up and it's just hooked onto here. And I have to remove that every night so I can get the garage door down. I actually have to unhook it and set it on the table. Um, that is what allows it to kind of move forward and backwards. If I was just using this one, the bell would only go up and down. It wouldn't have that diagonal motion where it moves forward and lands on the table in the exact same spot every time. So, uh, for that, that's the trickiest one because of that. And I have to adjust that string a little bit, or that fishing line a little bit every year, depending on exactly where the table is and where the candles need to be. Um, because I like to get it to land as close to the candles as possible so that it looks like it's intentional, um, intentionally going to that spot. Um, it makes it just makes the illusion a little bit better. Uh, the horn is on its own instrument. I'm oh, sorry, it's, the horn is on its own, its own reindeer motor. It's right back here. Again, just two, two fishing lines going to that reindeer motor. Uh, the tambourine and the trumpet share a um, reindeer motor. So if I look at that reindeer motor, it'll actually have four fishing lines going to it. Okay, and the way it all works, the, way, the reason it kind of has that wobble to it as it goes up and down, all depends on the spacing of these eye bolts. So those are the two for the tambourine. Those two are for the trumpet. The further apart they are, the more rocking motion it'll have as it moves up and down. Uh, because it's all, you know, again, going back to the arm, as it turns, depending on where that arm is, it's gonna pull the pull or let release the um, fishing line at different times. Um, the, if they're right next to each other, it won't be at different times. It'll be at the same time. They'll be doing the exact same thing. So the further spaced out those eye boats are, the more range of motion you'll have uh, with the instruments as far as the rocking back and forth goes, um, in addition to the up and down. If they're right next to each other, they'll just go up and down. There won't be any wobble to the instruments. And the wobble is kind of what gives it that ghostly floating effect. Uh, and then the drum, because it's so heavy, has its own reindeer motor. Uh, those are the two eye bolts for it, and you'll, you can see the uh, hooks going up and down. Um, and then that's the reindeer motor for it. It's a little bit noisy, but you, you can, you can kind of hear it whining a little bit, but you can't hear it when I have all the show audio going. Um, here's the, this is a little bit tricky, this part here was. This is what I did for the instruments. I drilled holes in the, or for the uh, drumsticks. I drilled holes, and I actually kind of went around and then uh, how did I do it? <laughs> okay, I went down. I actually went in the inner hole first. And then it come, goes through the drumstick and then goes under both sets of drumsticks. Comes up, goes through that side, then goes under, or through that side and then up and out. And then it's knotted um, to that. None of that shows up at night. It just looks like the drumsticks are floating above the drum. Um... Let's see, oh, the fishing line itself. This fishing line is eight pound fire line. I believe it's called Berkeley Fire Line. It's braided. 
Uh, it's great for just holding the weight. It is not great for friction. Friction over time, um, well, actually pretty quickly over one season, will definitely wear it out and you would have to replace the strings, which is the whole reason I upgraded to this system. Right now, these eight pound Berkeley fishing lines are only supporting the weight. They're not going through the eye bolts. Last year, I had them going through the eye bolts and I started having them to snap the very first night I ran everything this year. So this line up here is actually a monofilament. It's like a 40 pound monofilament and monofilament handles friction much better because it's just one solid surface. There's not no braid to it. It's a solid piece of filament um, and it's 40 pounds. So it's not gonna break anytime soon. And also I applied a little bit of silicone grease to those eye bolts just to make it uh, go smoother through. And then these are actually, uh, probably not the best way to do it. You could probably find a cheaper way to do it, but I actually use the hooks I use for the curtains. Um, I, I just, I took those out of the clips, but I had a ton of these things. So I just removed the little black metal hooks from the clips. That way I had black metal hooks that weren't gonna show up um, and under show lighting. Um, and just, you know, tie them on. And um, the main thing is you want this top hook when this is all the way up to be just below the eye hook. And then you actually adjust the height of the instrument based on the length of this line here, on the, of the, the braided line. Um, the other important thing with all this is that you have to make sure you have a counterweight that's adequate for the weight of the instrument. Uh, and that goes straight back. So you, again, you'll see that each of these has a line that hooks in and as a counterweight. I'm going back. Mine are very simple. That wasn't meant to be temporary, but it worked. I had never had a problem. So it, I've just kept doing that. That's just a little Dixie cup filled with large washers. That way I can adjust the weight easily. Just add more washers or remove washers. Um, the metal wooden framework is, <laughs> took some um, on the spot engineering um, in order to allow me to leave it up year round. So I don't have to worry about reassembling it. Um, it stays up year round. This pipe worker on the edge stays up year round. That's what the curtains all hook into. Um, but the wooden framework, is really the hard part because I still need to be able to get the garage door up and down each night. So that means this can't be on top of the rail. It actually has to be under the rail. So if I kind of go up there, you can see that I kind of created the hooks so that actually hooks around and hooks on top of the rail. Um, so you can see what I did there. Uh, that's the same on both sides. Now you see it kind of sags in the middle. Uh, I can't do anything about that because the garage door has this thing. So when the garage door is going down, there has to be clearance here for that to fit through. So I had to actually make a little U in this, which takes away some of the structural support, but it's not sagged anymore since last year. It's still sags the same amount. Uh, that allows this to go through without hitting it. Um, and I did cover this with black fabric just uh, because little kids, especially because they have a lower sight line when they're looking into the garage. Uh, this That way this will blend into the uh, black drapes that are at the top here. Uh, and the black drapes just can hook in to those up there. You wanna make sure you leave the black drape hanging down a little bit anywhere you have the uh, fishing line coming down. Uh, that's kind of what hides that gap is that black drape hanging down just a little bit. Um, let's see back here. Uh, the rear board. Um, supports the pipe and keeps it locked in place, but it also supports one of the um, counterweight hooks. There's a counterweight for the uh, for this is right here, and the counterweight for that one is behind it. Uh, as you can see, uh, this board has to be below that board so that it can get underneath the garage door, and that one's below it. Um, and you got to make sure that that counterweight hook is down low enough so it doesn't rise up and rub. You know, on this board here, it has to stay below it. So you've got to make sure you account for that in your, the placement of your eye hook. And then the same thing back there, you can see that one's a little bit is down lower so that it doesn't get caught up on that washer and get all knotted up. It has to make, you have to make sure it stays below it. Um, other than that, I don't know that there's anything else. This was easy, obviously. That's just resting on the railing because the garage door doesn't go back that far. Uh, the pipe itself is, I have it kind of tied to the framework that I have my, my garage shelves up there, you can see. Um, what else have we got? Same thing back there. 
I do have these um, permanently supported up to the garage ceiling because otherwise that would sag in the back. So that's what keeps that from sagging. So this is kind of what it looks like from rear. Again, there's your counterweights. Um, hopefully I explained and covered everything. Uh, the great thing about this is that I don't have to undo any of that. I can just leave these monofilaments here uh, all year long and I can just unhook these and preferably wrap them around something so they don't get knotted, especially this drum because there's a lot going on here and this one gets knotted very easily. But just unhooking these makes it super simple to uh, break down and set up again each year. And I know that those monofilament lines aren't gonna break anytime soon and neither are these braided uh, lines. Braided is much thinner for the same weight capacity but it does not do well with friction. So hopefully this helps everybody. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know.